Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Roland Martin just did an explosive interview talking about the situation that's happening at Bethune-Cookman University, and they had a very interesting week, interesting week between the student protests, between um, Ed Reed not having his contract reinstated. It's just so much going on, and we're going to talk about it. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let's get it right into it because we have a lot going on today. In this interview, Roland Martin had... Uh, president Drake, who's the interim president, he had Ed Reed on. He had the football players, he had three football players on who was part of the students or the players who signed the petition to bring Ed Reed back. He also had the Alumni Association on, the Bethune-Cookman Alumni Association along on, the Mary McLeod Alumni Association on. And then we'll get into why that's a big difference in a second. And he also had his normal uh, panel of Professor Malvo and also Dr. Obinga. And I forget the name of the third um, young lady. In this situation, well, in the first part of the interview, this is what we're going to break down today. We're going to talk about. Here's what we're going to do today. We're going to give an analysis. We're going to give a review of what happened. And then I'm going to show you clips. Fair use. I'm just going to show you clips. I'm not going to show you everything, but I'm going to show you clips from some of the interviews because I think it, those what stood out to me and I thought it was pretty important to kind of share little bits and pieces. But definitely go to Roland Martin's uh, channel to see the full thing because I think it's definitely worth your time. Dr. Drake, who's the interim president, is the first person up. In his part of the interview, I thought a couple things that stood out. He said he's the reason why Ed Reed was fired. He said it wasn't the AD's decision. The AD is Reggie Theus, who's the basketball coach and the AD and was also a former NBA All-Star. In the uh, next part of it that stood out to me was President Drake said Disney called and said, what are you going to do about the Ed Reed situation? And I thought Roland Martin's response was pretty good. Roland Martin was like, wait a minute. Did you say Disney called and said, what you're going to do with Ed Reed? He's like, well, they're one of our donors, blah, blah, blah. blah. Roland Martin was like, well, he did a, like a full segment about this. Like, well, how much money are they giving? Right. If they're calling the shots, you got to be paying the boss. The president was also adamant that the criticism of the university wasn't the reason why he got fired, but it was because of the use of profane music in one of the videos. And it was a Christian in a university. There was definitely a lot of pushback on that topic from Roland Martin and from others, because they're like, have you been to BCU? Have you not seen the music that they listen to on campus? You're not even seen that you guys have invited Rick Ross on campus. Um, he doesn't, doesn't play Christian music. Uh, so there's a lot of contradiction in that statement about whether or not it's a, the music being the situation or the reason he got fired. A big thing that the president said that a lot of people disagree with was, there's lockers on campus. Another big thing is the president said he walked around campus and the people knew him. First of all, Ed Reed disagreed with that. He's like, no, there are not lockers on campus. They have to. Most players take showers in their dorms. The alumni agreed with this. And the player said this. We do not have lockers. Which makes a lot of sense considering the other thing, which was they don't know him. They said, we don't know him. He doesn't show up. We don't know this man. One of the players went to far say he's been there two years. He hasn't seen him. And the older player said we saw him once at one classic one year. Right. So those are the contradictions. That's what stood out. What stood out for me in the Ed Reed interview, Ed Reed was so passionate. He has so much emotion. And he did say he still wants to coach. He wants to figure out a way to make it happen. He was with his partner, um, Ro Parrish, who's a former Miami player. And he's like, look, how, what, what can I do? What do I have to do to figure this out? Just let us have this conversation because I have a lot of people depending on me and I want to make this work. If the students wanted to work, he has alumni support, not massive. There's some who are against him, but there's definitely some that are with him. Isn't it about the kids? If the kids wanted to work, should they not be working hard to try to figure it out to make it work for the kids? Right. And then the alumni came on. Now this, well, 
we talk about the students. A couple things that stood out about the students. We talked about how they disagreed with the president about ever seeing him. They also said it's a hundred percent acceptance rate. I don't know how true that is. They said we can look it up. It's a 33% graduation rate. So the kids are like, if it's 100% acceptance, you just brought in your largest class in history, 1,000 students. You have a plan to bring on 1,200 students the following year. Where's the money going for our facilities, right? The president is saying, well, after the hurricane, there's a lot of this, there's a lot of that. We don't know what we're exactly going to do with the money. Or we have to find a way to fix a lot of things with the money. We're still waiting on FEMA. Just a lot of excuses, uh, to be honest with you. He sounds very untrustworthy um, after listening to him. And like he really wasn't being transparent. The Alumni Association came out and they said they're being sued. <laughs> I know, right? Crazy. The Alumni Association said they're being sued by the Board of Trustees and the president because they're using the uh, intellectual property, like the logos of the school. And they're like, this is started because they've been asking the board and they've been asking the president to be the board of the board of trustees to be transparent with them to open up the books. But BCU is a private school, so they don't necessarily have to open up the books. And they said there is definitely a culture of um, if you speak out, you there's retaliation uh, against people who speak out against the university. And apparently that's what Ed Reed has run into. He spoke out and there's been a severe backlash. My biggest takeaway or my final takeaway from this situation is this. This is if Ed Reed never coaches again at the university, but it opens up the school to heal all these wounds. Cause it's clearly a lot of wounds going on and a lot of wounds. And there's, isn't cohesiveness the way it should be. There isn't transparency and there's a lot of work that needs to be done with the facilities at the school. So if those things could get done, then it was all worth it. If you ask me. All right. But what do you think? Do you think Ed Reed should be able to coach again for Bethune Cookman university? Don't forget to stay tuned. Watch some of the clips. Fair use, fair use, fair use. Catch you on the flip easy. Peace. We said to him, look, you're going to become part of that. Are you open to helping us do that and build the program? He said yes to that. So when we saw the first video uh, criticizing the university and saying, well, it's trashy and my office is dirty and all that, first of all, he was an employee of the university and he had not an office. When the last staff moved out, we started renovating that building, everything from the coaches' rooms to the other places. We had given him some permission um, that he really took to the next level. First of all, he wasn't authorized to even take video. He wasn't authorized to do any of those things, but he did them anyway. The university had to take responsibility for that because it happened. But quite as kept, you know, that isn't the kind of behavior that we would expect. And then the expletives and the, you know, those kinds of things in that first video, you might call that an aberration. And I would say it could be, and you have to be a forgiving individual. But when you have this much damage, you look at the gym and you look at this video and you look at it critically, but I would invite anyone to come to our campus because all parts of our campus don't look that way. Um, we are really trying to work hard to clean it up. And given the fact that, again, we suffer two hurricanes back to back um, and because of supply chain issues, because most people in Florida, particularly central Florida, are still recovering. I have people from my staff living on our campus because their homes were destroyed. Um, Ed Doc, never took, that didn't take those things into account. Doc, hold tight one second. I'm going to go to quick.
I'm foundation. I've been running for 20 years, man. 20 years to work for kids. I built the park in my own neighborhood. You understand? Because kids are dying. This ain't right. This ain't right, man. For Mr. Lawrence Drake, Dr. Drake, to come on and talk about me in that way. I knew this was a Christian school. I knew that. I'm a Christian man. I I've I know I played music, but you do do you see? He said he walked campus every day, right? I don't believe that. Because if you walk campus every day, you'll see what these young folk wear to school, man. You will see this. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? They 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 worse than the songs. You have crackheads walking through campus, man. There's no security for these young women and men. I'm not trying to bash the school. We were picking up trash when our screen recorded. I didn't post that. Somebody screen recorded me and put that out there because they said I was mutting the school. I'm not mutting the school. We're picking up trash. At the time, you're telling me I'm mutting the school. I'm on the ground grabbing trash from under trees behind bushes because my football team was acting too cute. Don't interview me. Interview them kids. Interview the team. Interview these young women and men. I'm not here for me. I got a 40-year-old son who I've been missing his stuff for three weeks. I'm tired, man. This is exhausting, man. They lying on me, man. Why lie on me, man, to save your face, man? Because you're doing something wrong. You understand me? I took families to a With us right now are three of the football players uh, at Bethune Cookman. Those players have actually signed, uh, I think it's about 30 or so, signed a petition uh, asking the university to rescind their decision to bring Ed Reed uh, back uh, to the university. Uh, Jaden Bivens, the student athlete, Austin uh, Yankawi, hope I pronounced that correctly, let me know. And Anthony Frederick, uh, glad to have all three of you here. First, are all three of you football players? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so uh, first off, uh, you've heard the, the interim president on the show. You heard Ed Reed there. Just share with our, share with our audience just uh, your thoughts on when he gave you the news that, uh, that they, were, they were terminating him. And what do you want the administration to know uh, as it relates to uh, Ed Reed uh, for you being uh, remaining the head football coach at Bethune-Cookman? Uh, I got it. Um, so... The importance to that is that Coach Reed in three weeks has essentially done more than this entire administration and other um, program leads, like other head coaching staffs and whatnot. He's done more in three weeks than they have in like of the past five years. Um, things that you know, Coach Drake mentioned saying that we didn't share helmets, we don't shower, or we we sh we actually have showers. We don't have showers. We don't have a locker room. We have to watch out where we put our stuff in the stadium locker room so it doesn't get wet and then get moldy, and then we got to practice in moldy stuff. Or when we go and put our stuff away, it's in the we shed. put it in the shed, and, the shed and then gets the wet shed the gets wet from the rain, Not and then we got to practice in that moldy stuff. Moldy balls, moldy helmets. We share those moldy helmets too, and that gear. Most of us had to buy our own uh, Lysol and stuff to yeah. spray we our. We had, we had to, we had to clean our stuff ourselves. Uh, once we get our gear from um, the equipment manager from that shed, it smelled bad. Uh, I remember the first time uh, I opened my bag, and uh, yeah, most of the guys were just like, yeah. what's, "What's going on?" Um, we asked if we could, like, we, we, we asked for the basics. We asked if we could get, you know, stuff to spray our stuff down, and um, that Could've probably didn't happen that. until, like, <laughs> the very, very end. Yeah, we got that maybe uh, week eight was when we got that. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure on week five was when we actually had uh, the mold outbreak in our helmets and gear. And in my, in my gloves alone, I didn't wear gloves at practice because it literally just smelled like the epitome of mold. Like, I was just smelling a handful of mold. And um, 
What makes this even worse is that uh, we had to deal with the conditions when we were displaced. That was even worse. And I know that Anthony was here uh, for the entire world tour, is what we call it as a nickname. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we were we would spend 16 hour days with the football team. 16 hours. I have the receipts on that because I have the old screenshots of our schedule. And we would go from eight o'clock all the way until ten thirty. Our off day would be considered uh yeah, so awesome. one of the one of the yeah. bus drives was considered as an off day. So we were on the bus for 16 probably sixteen hours. Yep, sixteen hours stuck on there. By the time we got there it was probably like I wanna say one thirty. Yeah, it was about one. Uh we got some food. Um and then after that it was, you know, we got we went to bed, then the next morning we wake up. Uh, meetings and everything, go eat breakfast. That's yep, a normal day. Like, yep. we, like we didn't just drive 16 hours and get there at 1.30. The president said that, look, Bethune-Cookman has had faced a couple of hurricanes, uh, that there are um, that? obviously financial issues. And he said that uh, when he said, look, he walks the campus every single day. Uh, and, and, and he sees and hears what the students, and I said, well, you know, how, what are you sharing with the students? What, how are you talking to those students? And he said, hey, you know, we should, do, we should do more of that. Of course, you heard him ask me to visit, and I said, look, I'll be happy to come to a town hall there, uh, because it, it's abundantly clear, it's abundantly clear there's a disconnect uh, between what he is saying and what y'all are saying. Go ahead. So he said he's been here for under uh, two years, just right under two years. Right. And since he's been here, I've been, I'm a freshman. I've been here since the last semester and this semester. So it's going on almost a year now. And I've never seen him uh, walk. I've, this is my first time seeing him on this. I've never seen him in person in the flesh walking on this campus. I've never spoke to him. I didn't even know that he was the interim president. To <laughs> Me my, and Anthony our first time. <laughs> never seen him until we saw him at the, the classic, classic speaking there. at the banquet. Yep. That I've is never... when we first met him. On top of that, if he wants to really talk about how he comes on, to campus and he understands students and he gets mad at Coach Reed for music. You understand we play that on campus every day. With DJs. People dress very, very, very you know, not it's that's, not, that's, that, I don't know if y'all heard that. That's why I was saying to my panel, again, yeah. I, look, I, I've, I've, oh, I've, been, I've been on 65 HBCU campuses. And so I'm like, okay, I hear you doc, but I know what I hear. And so, yeah. if you're going to object to what you say Ed was playing or what was the music, then you, are, are you doing checks all around campus? Because I know what I hear. And he's an interim president, too, so he's kind of a non-factor. You know what I mean? In my opinion, when it comes to us as student athletes and as students, if you're going to actually come in and, you know, if you're going to actually do the community service with us, you know what I mean? We didn't see you at all. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't see like, you. Not like, at one time pick up any trash around here, not come around at all. So why why aren't you come and do that with us? Because you know that that's something that could help with a lot of things bring the campus together, which we mm-hmm. did by ourselves. You know what I mean? We did that all by ourselves. I had Sunday. a food truck come in and give free food out for everybody who was done who was who was done picking up the trash with us. But then also campus security got called up on my on my food truck and it's the first time it's ever happened to that food truck and they got moved from the location. We had to go out and buy our own uh, garbage bags. Yeah, um, we had to buy our own garbage bags. They wouldn't, let, they wouldn't they wouldn't let they wouldn't us let into us the in our own center. facility. The uh, campus security said they got their keys taken away to the ATC. We could all we wanted to go in there and get was trash garbage bags, bags and, gloves. and gloves. That's it. That's all we wanted. And and I was one of the first people to get there at the ATC, and I was just standing there, and, you know, people started walking up, and I was kind of like, are you guys athletes? Are you guys, you know? And they were like, no, we're here to help. We're here, we're here, you know, because we saw you guys picking up trash. We saw Ed Reed doing it, and, and we want to be a part of it. Every, you, you, you see the videos. You see the, you see the pictures. Everybody was having a good time when we were doing it. He was on live with us. We got to say hi to him, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that kind of change is something that, you don't really see a lot anymore. I mean, some some um what some some other people might you know. Yeah, they, they, I mean we had we had a, a lot of people come by. We had volleyball, track, basketball, and girls basketball, and I think we had baseball too. Other organizations. Too. Other organizations. We had every frat come out. Yep. We had uh, sororities coming out. We had uh, the entire student body was there on Sunday, and you know, that really shows us that we can all come together as a campus. But the thing is, is that 
no one, and I mean no one from staff, administration or anything came out and helped. No one else came out and said, oh, yeah, they, they're doing community service. You definitely would saw, see it on Twitter because you, you saw me speaking and, and talking and tweeting, and I've already hit over 100,000 views. I know you saw me. And I know you saw that we scheduled community service and we scheduled, you know, whatever we scheduled. And you didn't come out and represent, you know, the school at, itself at, as a staff or administration. At your rally, at the rally today, students were saying that uh, the, the board needs to go. You heard President Drake say uh, the board doesn't need to be, if we do a town hall, the board doesn't need to be there um, in terms of laying out what their issues are. But one, he's still the interim. The board is going to determine whether he get that t tag removed or if they bring a, in a new president. And so have y'all formally requested a meeting with the board of trustees uh, and to discuss the, these issues? Well, this is bigger than just the football team. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, not just us. No, 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 but when I say y'all, I'm meaning not the football team, meaning student bodies saying, I, hey, we want to hear from the ministry the, that y'all want to talk to the administration and the board of trustees so they understand your feelings. Yes, we sir. Are a lot, on that, a yeah. lot, a lot of, a lot of like SGA um, and a lot of the people that have those titles that have that, that those connections to be able to reach out to them have been trying and trying. And um, today is probably the first day where we started to kind of get like a little bit of leeway. But at the same time, it's like these are the kind of situations where if they let the students have a voice, this 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 situation wouldn't be wouldn't be happening. You know, yeah. um, I mean, it's. It's sad, but it's the truth. Uh, everything we're saying. Is if we were heard right away, this wouldn't be an issue. But the thing is, is that they don't want us to be heard because there's something else going up on top that's happening that we don't know about, that we don't fully understand, but we know it's happening. Because you can see that with a 100% acceptance rate and a 33% graduation rate, there's obviously something wrong. And you're bringing in more freshmen. You brought in your biggest freshman hall of the year, of, of all years, but you're cutting senior scholarships. So they're having to come, no come out of pocket. Yeah, and it's coming out of their pockets yeah. now. You, you want money. That's what you want? Well, you want money. Well, gentlemen, um, look, uh, I hope the president accepts my invitation uh, to do this campus-wide uh, town hall. Uh, certainly, I hope that the Board of Trustees and the administration sits down with students and communicates more. Uh, we are going to uh, definitely continue to cover this. Uh, we had some other alumni members. We're going to have them on. We're going to have some other folks on as well. I appreciate the three of you coming on, sharing your thoughts and concerns. And, and I can promise you uh, this will be not the last time that we talk about what's happening at Bethune-Cookman. And so I can't speak for any other media, but uh, I own this. And I can guarantee you we will continue uh, to shine the light on what's happening there uh, and continue to press for answers uh, that, you, that you guys are demanding. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate that. Coach Reed, we got you. I appreciate it.